Okay, uh, welcome. Thank you for coming um, on the, uh, in our new venue. And uh, fortunately, it's not raining, although it's certainly a rain shower might feel good. Um, we start with the Pledge of Allegiance, and the flag is over your shoulder. Um, so please stand and let's re recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm Mike Wisseman, your moderator. Uh, I would like to start with just a moment of silence. Um, the moment of silence is for the 100,000 plus victims that have died from the coronavirus and also for George Floyd and the senseless, his senseless death in Minneapolis, uh, for all the victims of racial injustice and hatred everywhere. Thank you. Now I want to introduce the rest of the uh, participants up here, starting with the selectmen. They'll introduce themselves. Scott Bergeron. Dave Pierce. Yeah. Town Administrator. Jeff Kravitz. Wendy Hull. <laughs> Lauren Goldberg. Town Council, Finance Committee, please introduce yourself. Elliot Crow, Chair. Alex Kaistura, Vice Chair. Linda Forge. And then the School Administration, if you could stand and introduce yourselves, please. All right. Is Rick Martin here? Did I forget anybody? No. Um, we have our state representative, Natalie Blay, here, and wants to say a few words. Come up, uh, Natalie, please. to keep things lively. Uh, thank you all for coming out tonight to our annual town meeting, and I want to thank our incredible select board for giving so much of yourselves every day, but certainly in recent weeks. Jeff, welcome to Sunderland. <laughs> Glad we could have you join us right now at this particular point in time. I also want to thank everybody in town, including Wendy Hool. Where's Wendy? And certainly, Mike, for all you do for the town of Sunderland. <laughs> Look, there's no doubt that these are difficult times. And I just wanted to come here tonight to say a few words, just to let you know that no matter how difficult things get, I'm still here working for you. So whether it's a question about reopening, unemployment, housing assistance, food assistance, I want you to know that you can reach out to my office at any time for assistance. You can certainly find me right down the street as well on North Main. I think you all know where I live. But I wanted to give you my contact information tonight so that you can call or email me if you need anything at all. My phone number is 413-362. 9453, it's 362-9453. I keep this phone with me at all times because we know that this pandemic doesn't stop at five o'clock or on the weekends. 
You can also email me at natalie.blay at mahouse.gov. So please don't hesitate to reach out at any time. I want to thank the town of Sunderland for caring for one another so much and for being here tonight to show our Commonwealth the importance of town meetings and the lengths that we are going to to participate in democracy. Thank you. Oh, Natalie messed with my notebook here. Okay. Um, so, as you can tell, things are different than last year. So, I'll explain some of the different procedures we have set up. We would like everyone to remain mass unless there's a medical need. Please maintain the six-foot distance, unless you're married to the person. I think that's an exception. If someone has a concern, please let one of the police officers ask one of the police officers for help or move to a location where they feel safer. Santa Cans are located behind the town offices. Uh, we will use voting cards. The visual aid for all of us. So everyone has a set of three. So obviously the green that says yes is yes. Red, no, and white is if you have a question. And then also we will use the white card when we go through each cat on the budget. If you have a hold on one particular category in the budget, hold it up and we'll put a hold on it and revisit it when the time comes. Amendments to motions need to be in writing. I have a pen and some paper up here. So you need to submit those to us. And uh, we can go out and send someone out to grab that from you. But it needs to be done in writing. Um, a big thank you to all states for the sanitizer, um, Millstone Market for the water, FCAT and Matt Carlson for the sound system and all of the setup. Um, I want to make sure a town meeting clips along. It's hot out here, but we also want to ensure that people have time um, to ask questions and have input. Oh, wait a minute. I can help you. I can help you. It's My kids are going to be so embarrassed. How many glasses? <laughs> How many glasses? Pursuant to within warrant, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Sunderland by posting up attested copies of the same at the town office building, the Sunderland Public Library, and the Sunderland Post Office seven days at least before the date hereof, as within directed. Frederick A. Laurinaitis, May 28, 2020 at 10.25 a.m. Okay, now we're looking for a motion to dispense with the reading of motions. Second. All those in favor say aye. Or hold up your, practice, hold up your card. Listen, practice. Practice, green card if yes. Okay, all those opposed, hold up the red card. It passes. And there's one more motion that we're doing for the first time here. It's a motion to allow school officials, town council, and other town employees permission to speak. Second. All those in favor of that motion, hold up your green card. Those opposed, red card. That passes unanimously. Um, I need to explain that um, I'm allowed to declare a two-thirds vote, but if someone disagrees with my call, um, se all it takes is seven people to ask for another vote, and we are going about to swear in some tellers, and they will go and count. So, who are the tellers you're going to use, Wendy? So could Liz Sullen, Lauren Starr, Jennifer Uncles, and Bobby Ahern please come forward and get sworn in. Can everybody hear me?
Green card if yes, red card if no. Okay, that's a lot of green. Good, thank you. There's water over here. So we are uh, ready to go. Article one. Dedication. Ah, no, we're not ready to go. Scott has to speak. Actually, Tom does first. Tom, you want to come up? Not really, but okay. Thank you all for coming this evening. One of the things the, uh, the select board has is the dedication of our annual report. And it, historically, the chair, a few nights before the town meeting, has the advantage of going to uh, the person that receives the dedication, and we get to uh, have a conversation. This year, each year we have an opportunity recognize, to recognize an individual or group who has contributed their expertise, talents, and or passion to the betterment of our community. Many groups or individuals have been recognized over the years having served our town in ways that make Sunderland such a great place. This year, we'd like to dedicate our annual report to <laughs> Wendy Hool. Who will get up now? Come up here. Thank you. Come up here. Wendy has served as Sunderland's town clerk for the last, we don't talk how many years because she'd get embarrassed, and counting. In her early career, she was committed to earning the distinguished certification of the New England Board of Massachusetts Town Clerks Association of Masters Municipal Clerk, MMC, and Certified Massachusetts Municipal Clerk, CMMC, something she, she achieved with her dedication and perseverance. This certification requires a variety of elements to maintain, all of which she continues to stay current with. The town clerk's role has many responsibilities, which starts with being the town's central information point for responding to inquiries from the public. She is pivotal as a chief election official in acting as a recording officer, register of vital statistics, registrations and appointments, and maintains municipal code and bylaw records. Sunderland is vibrant with community participation, so the position keeps Wendy very busy. She continues to be involved in other forms of town government, volunteering for many committees that are important to the, for the community, as well as those that fuel historical interests of the town, such as the most recent Volume 3 Steering Committee, the 300th Anniversary Committee, okay. Veterans Memorial okay. and Park Committee, Swampfield Historical Society and Historical Commission, to name just a few. Many times you will find Wendy volunteering without the official appointment, and she is always assisting residents in some way, which is a testament to her love of her community and the people. In fact, Wendy right now volunteers to deliver meals to our seniors that can't get out and get them themselves. Be quiet. This is your time. <laughs> the only time I've ever been able to say that. Thank you, Wendy, for your service and being such a welcoming representative for our town. So secondly, uh, the selectmen have the opportunity to uh, nominate someone for the annual town report under the guise of the spirit of Sunderland. And this year we'd like to thank and reach out and recognize uh, Lucy Allman. And I don't know if she's here or not, haven't seen her. There she is. So 
Lucy's a, not just a master gardener. You've probably seen her work not just in the center of town, but greeting travelers as they enter and pass through Sunderland. Many years, Lucy dedicated herself to flourishing the beautiful flower beds, each of the corners where now, that are situated now. Over the years, the intersection layouts changed more than once. Lucy's made sure the gardens have always been the focal point as someone enters our community. She's tended to those delicate beds herself since the early days. And how many early days has that been? 19 years. That's right. And now we got her saying it in public. That's good. The vast gardens take a lot of effort to maintain, but one thing you can count on any given week in the growing season is you'll probably see her out there, right? And that's a good thing. In addition to her gardening, Lucy's gardening in general, as well as for the town, she's maintained, been a long-standing member of the Friends of the Sunderland Public Library, president of the board of directors, managing the library book fund and annual plant sale, as well as offering other support roles as an amazing advocate for the library. We want to thank Lucy for not just her past efforts, but hopefully to encourage her to keep up the great work. Thanks for the spirit, Lucy. It's great. Uh, and as a reminder, Lucy will take donations. And you can either get in touch with Lucy. It costs money to do what she does. And you can either get in touch with Lucy directly, or you can... Uh, Talk to somebody at the town offices, probably Wendy, and they can uh, take your money. Very simple. Okay, anything else? David. <laughs> and lastly, one of the last things we do is uh, we get to remember those, kind of like the Oscars, it's sort of the part where we remember those that we have unfortunately lost in the past year. Barbara Bolden. Barbara was a valued member of the cafeteria staff and also an election officer. James Smith. Jim was a long-standing member of the Sunderland Fire Department. Richard Strikers, and I apologize if I... Uh, don't do justice to everybody's names. Richard was dedicated to serve as the civil defense uh, <clears throat> for civil defense for several years. Jim Williams. Jim served on the Planning Board, Conservation Commission, Zoning Board of Appeals, and the Land Preservation Committee. He also served on the Frontier School Committee, Solid Waste Study Committee, and most recently, the Volume 3 Steering Committee of the History of Sunderland. And finally, Marjorie Yurkovitz. Marjorie has enjoyed <clears throat> serving as a library trustee for many years. Let's take a brief moment to remember all of those that we've lost this year. Thank you. All right, I, I, th I think we're ready. Did I forget anything? Okay. Except I can't find the page. Hold on a second. All right, I think it starts with number one. Uh, article one. Motion. Uh, second. I don't, anybody have any questions about Article one? All those in favor of Article one, hold up your green card, please. All those opposed, red card. Uh, unanimously passes. Article two. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 2. Is it working? Any questions about Article 2? All those in favor of Article 2, hold up your green card, please. All those opposed, red card. That passes unanimously also. Article 3, which is the budget. Everybody have their copy of the budget? You guys want to make a motion on the budget, yep. please? Motion of Article 3. Second. So what we've usually done is gone through the uh, budget line by line in the terms of total government, total town buildings. And we will put holds on any department that people have questions about, and we'll come back and revisit them. 
So to put a hold on a department, use your white card. So I will just go through and hold up your white card if you have a question and we'll come back, we'll make a mark on that. Total general government, any questions? Total town buildings, any question? Total police department, any questions? Total fire department, any questions? Total inspectors and other protection, any questions? Total highway, any questions? Total health and sanitation, any questions? Total library, any questions? Total elementary school, any questions? We have a hold? All right. Total Franklin County Tech Assessment, any questions? Total Frontier Assessment, any questions? Out of district tuition and transport, any questions? Total benefits and insurance, any questions? Total miscellaneous and reserve fund, any questions? Total wastewater treatment plant budget, any questions? Total debt and interest, any questions? That it? That's it. So I think the only hold we had was on elementary school. No, we had inspectors. We had what? Inspectors. Inspectors? All right. Sorry I missed that. You have to wag your flag high for. Okay. So, inspectors, question. Can we have a mic on a stick over here, please? Just, just wanted to know about the uh, what we what we're getting. Could you repeat that, Will? There's an increase of uh, you know an eleven thousand dollars, and I'm wondering what we're getting. The majority of that was the uh, expenses for building inspections. There was, um, I think, about two or three thousand dollars for um, an update to the code book. Um, expenses for telecommunications and travel-related expenses and training. Building inspector expenses way up. Does that answer your question, Will? Okay. And then there was another hold on elementary school. Sorry, moderator. I guess it's more of a comment. Yeah, wondering is a question. I just think that it's commendable that there's a 0% increase in a year of unknowns. And I just wanted to comment on that and wonder how that's possible. Ben? Darius Modesto, Superintendent. Um, we made a, 
we know that the, the state's finances or revenues coming in um, the, when the budget comes out in July is going to be short. How can it not be um, given the shutdown of the state over the last few months? So our first effort was to come through with a level funded budget. There is sacrifices in this budget. We did have to cut. Um, just make sure I get my numbers correct for the correct town. Um, we had to cut $144,000 from the budget. Um, we're going to have to out to make the needs of the students this coming fall. Um, we're anticipating that there's going to be more uh, more issues with the revenues as it comes in after the state budget comes out. So this is kind of a holding spot. Um, we did offset with some of our reserve funds, but we're also very concerned about FY22 is supposed to be a worse year. I'm sorry, a worse year um, uh, fiscally. So um, we're trying to do a balanced approach of cutting and um, using some of the reserves that we do have and keep the best program we have that we can do moving forward. And then it comes into the question of what does the program look like for next year? Um, right now, we just released a kind of comprehensive uh, planning committee um, that we just released actually on Friday. Um, to kind of develop a plan for what school looks like when we come back and there's gonna be associated costs to that and, and, and obviously reductions as I uh, can answer any questions to that if you want or uh, Hi Greg Gottschalk uh, chair of the uh, school committee. Uh, I do want to say that that budget is more uh, based on again, expected revenue rather than needs. Uh, were it not for the COVID, we were hoping to do some things for the school that we're not able to do, but in recognition of the finances we expect to see uh, and a lot of cleverness and hard work on the part of the, the teachers, the administrators, the everyone from uh, maintenance, uh, IAs, uh, we've been able to come forward with this level budget for now. I know there's still a lot of uncertainty, like we said, for, for the rest of the year and the coming year. Uh, but I did also want to just take a brief moment to say thank you to the, uh, again, teachers, administration, and everyone else who works in the schools because they've done a fantastic job uh, coping with a lot of changes on short notice due to this COVID crisis. Mr. Moderator? Um, just so everyone knows, um, Ma Massachusetts is a little different when it comes to how it does business. Basically, we have to have a balanced budget when we vote on it right. What we, when you guys are voting right now, you vote on a balanced budget. There's, there's two parts of the budget. There's the expenditures that we're, we're talking about now and the revenue that we never really ever talk about but it's as important as the expenditure side. We know that this coming year is going to be trying, and the state has given us two, two methods to, to deal with it. The way we're doing it today, or we could go on one-twelfth budgets. We didn't feel that one-twelfth budgets was fair to anybody, the schools or us or our departments, so that's why we went to what we're doing right now. We, we don't know what's going to happen, and, and Natalie is going to be a big part of that um, because if revenue doesn't come in as expected, we are going to have to see changes in how the state does business. The state may actually allow us to deficit spend this year, which they have never done before. They may have, we may have to shift our, some of our res resources to our expenditures to next year which they haven't done before so what we tried to do between the finance committee the school committees the libraries the police fire highway in the town is to come with a reasonable budget with with certain expectations right now it's probably I've, I've been doing it for 20 years and it's the most uncomfortable I've ever been with a budget because I don't know what's going to happen so we would ask you to pay attention to what's happening around us with our over the next year. We will probably be seeing again in the, in the fall or, or the early uh, winter to talk more about budgets. But we really, we really thought that our budget that we presented right now was a responsible budget 
without, without, without drastic increases or drastic cuts right now. So we, we appreciate your support. Thank you. Okay. I think we've answered any other questions lingering out there about Article 3. Okay. We are set to vote on Article 3 then, passing the budget for $8,062,617. All those in favor of Article 3, please hold up your green card. All those opposed, red card. It's unanimous. Thank you. Article 4. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move. Article 4, please. Second. Explanation. Mr. Moderator, in, in front of the body we have the annual capital budget remember it was five ish years ago now this is probably our fourth capital budget it's separate than the operating budget the motivation of doing that that many years ago was to separate out operating from long-term spending and to recognize that some long-term spending requires some debt that some long-term spending can be done through available uh, funds Subsequently, the town voted uh, a capital stabilization override. Most of the article in front of you is from that capital stabilization override, some leftover balance from a prior year, and then some sewer reserves. So as you look down the list, we're going to fund, if this vote is successful, some SCBA air packs for the fire department. We're going to pay an installment of a truck lease, of a, a four-year truck lease for the high, highway to garage. We're going to put some money in our buildings at the library, an ADA door operator replacement, some acoustical panels, some HVAC repairs, which we've actually done each of the last th a minimum of three years. Uh, at this, at as the town office building, that door right there is not easy to get into if you're in a wheelchair. So we're going to upgrade that door, allow access. Um, at Frontier, this is the first year of Frontier passing uh, a similar program, the Frontier School Committee, and this is our portion of their assessment on their annual capital plan. And it's important to bear in mind, by placing it here, the town is avoiding uh, interest on debt being borne. So this money being expended, if all four, if in keeping with the regional agreement passes, then Frontier has this money to do repairs in their building, including this year some floor replacement, some central clock repairs, intercom repairs, and there's a very vibrant uh, and active team working on that. I thank the administration for uh, inviting select board members into that process. At the elementary school, a multi-year program of both uh, some exterior repairs that's at the base of the building where it connects to the concrete. And then that'll be multi-year. Expect to see this again. And then some floor replacement and flooring repairs. Now, again, the reason for doing this is to avoid a wholesale borrowing. Some of the life cycle of this work doesn't really mandate borrowing. It can, but it's costly. And then lastly, separate line item, the wastewater treatment plant has its own through users fees stabilization fund, if you will. And their plan is to spend $34,000 on level controls. So people who are on the system are contributing to this, not across the entire town. So we started the year with about $115,000 and we're ending the year with just about $115,000. There's not been a year that capital hasn't equaled, uh, <laughs> capital money raised isn't uh, a third of what's asked, believe us. Anybody who's seen the capital planning committee minutes or seen some of the original requests, we're well behind on what's being asked for. But we do manage to pay for a little bit every year and we're better for it by moving it off of the operating budget. So that's what you have. This comes through taxation and in this case as well through the sewer reserve. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, any questions? Article 4. Now, Article 4 does require a two-thirds vote because it's a stabilization fund. 
question. Yes. Um, I just wanted to check. It looks like Frontier dropped their plans to resurface the track. Is that right? Years, that's going to be a debt authorization through Frontier and will be assessed debt next year. Yes. Okay. Well, Scott, that's true, but we are also trying to push it off to after 22. So we're, re we're looking at the. So basically, last year you authorized Frontier to take on debt. We haven't, we've started the project, meaning we have the. Uh, 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 a, uh, uh, plan, uh, a design firm to do the to do the track and such. Um, they've started they've started that work. However, looking at the budget this year and looking at the budget next year, we're hoping to do to take the loan. Um, so the first payment's going to be due in FY23. Um, they, they allowed you to um, take on the uh, take on the loan and, and then do a 14 month wait before the first payment. Knowing that next year is going to be tough, we're already trying to prepare the towns, working together on that. So you, it is kind of the, we have slowed the projects of those capital plans because of the fiscal environment that we're in at this point. Anything else? Any other questions? Article 4. All right, I think we're ready to vote. All those in favor of Article 4, please raise your green card. All those opposed, red card. It passes unanimously. Article 5. To move Article 5. Second. Explanation. Mr. Moderator, I'm glad I'm wearing a mask so you won't see the grimace. <laughs> so the town, uh, as many towns across the country, uh, were dinged by the IRS with the help from our esteemed colleagues at Culpeman and Page. We helped to get this penalty reduced quite a bit. Essentially, the assertion from the IRS was that our, our portion of our health insurance contribution was not affordable, air quotes. That said, we pay, we're 60-40 now, 65-35, excuse me, 65-35. And um, after some wrangling with the IRS, uh, this is our settlement. Peter Gregarin, actually, to his credit, asked uh, in our last meeting, is this something we can anticipate in the future? And the short answer is probably not, but we're working toward that plan where it's considered, quote, air quotes, affordable. So this is a penalty in real time. We fought it for a little over a year now, and uh, we need to pay this bill. So if I capture that correctly, Council? Thank you. Any questions? It's irritating. I get it. Any, any questions about this? Article 5. Sounds like we have to pay, whether we think we deserve to or not. Article 5, all those in favor of Article 5, green card, please. Those opposed, red card. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Article 6. We can make a motion on Article 6. You need, do you want to explain this? It sounds like it's residual bills. It is. It's just straggling bills from the prior fiscal year. Um, we've got $181 for free cash to pay for uh, these following bills. Uh, $60 to the State Boiler Inspection Program and $121.33 to the Chintas Corporation for but first aid supplies probably and a few other things. Yes. Microphone. There it goes. There it is. So th this, this I actually consider a large measure of, of progress. There have been years in the past where paying bills in real time, we've taken the measure of having a special town meeting before the town meeting to pay those bills. Sometimes those bills have been much higher. I'd like to thank our administrative team, even with the gap in 
hiring to close this year out with a whopping $181.33 of unpaid business. Thank you. So this requires a four-fifths vote. All those in favor of Article 6, raise your card, please. Green card. All those opposed, red card. That passes unanimously. Thank you. Article 7. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 7, please. Second. Mr. Moderator, every year part of the... Uh, uh, sewer wastewater treatment we we ask uh, our operator to uh, come up with suggestions what we need to do and this year they are recommending that we spend approximately twenty eight thousand dollars to do some video review of our sewer lines so basically it's a way to find programming for FCAT so if you want to, uh, when, when we get the sewer video, we'll, we'll arrange with FCAT to put it on and there will be hours of entertaining video of Sunderland sewers. Um, but, but in all seriousness, this is, this is actually uh, is good stuff if you're a sewer guy. It, it helps us. The last time we did it, we, uh, we identified areas that needed to be uh, um, slip lined that we actually lined inside the pipe that took care of uh, what they call I&I &I, which is infiltration of water from outside sources that was going to the sewer that we were having to treat but we didn't need to have to treat because it was just groundwater so this is uh, money well spent and uh, it, it will work with FCAT so everybody will get to see the benefit of that. The deep dark underground Sunderland. Um, any any questions about this? Okay. Article 7. All those in favor, green card please. All those opposed, red card. Passage unanimously. Thank you. Article 8. I'd like to move Article 8, Mr. Moderator. Okay, Mr. Moderator, so, Explain. yeah, this is a combination of one, uh, work committed by our designer engineering firm, and then work to be completed for us to reach 100% completion designs for the North Main Street reconstruction project. The last piece of this, actually $20,000, is for easement acquisitions, and anybody who's on North Main Street can help the town out with that. We're asking here for, I'm, I'm going to get into the project a little bit right now. We're asking for uh, your consideration on the easement because these easements are not changing any bounds. They are only construction easements in that they will take a little bit of space during construction and you'll have your space right back to where it was uh, at the end of construction. So these are construction easements. This $106,000 coming from free cash puts us in our complete documents to be submitted to the DOT for the North Main Street construction based on a great north wind occurred. So based on many meetings at the town office building uh, with concerned citizens, uh, changes in design, uh, you're going to see uh, a, a slightly wider North Main Street. You're going to see a slightly improved bike access on North Main Street. You're going to see improved sidewalks on North Main Street. And as equally important, we're going to see a lot of the underground work on North Main Street as part of this project. This is back in the day, was budgeted a little over $2.3 million, and we got on the mass tip traffic improvement plan. And uh, this is our last piece of the required engineering work to have that happen. The goal is bid submissions, construction of 22, Jeff, right? In for 21, building in 22. Okay, any questions? 
but it's been a long and winding process. Uh, Article 8 is a uh, transfer from stabilization, so it requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of Article 8, please put up your green card. All those opposed, red card. Uh, passes unanimously. Article 9. Motion on Article 9. Do you, want, do you want to explain? Uh, Article 9 okay. basically, uh, it's a revolving fund. Most of our, except for the building inspector, that uh, we have, a, a, it's a, typically a salaried position because he does uh, zoning enforcement as well. The wiring inspector, plumbing inspector, board of health, uh, the library community room, fire inspector, highway shared equipment, these are all funds that uh, we're, we're allowed to, to take in funds and expend funds so we take in we'll take in money then we're able to use that money to pay for those the use of those items so it's, it's a good deal for the town any questions on article 9 okay all those in favor of article 9 green card please all those opposed red card article 9 passes unanimously Article 10. Move Article 10, please. Second. Sarah. Hi there. I'm Sarah Snyder, chair of the community. Sorry for the uh, crackling microphone. Um, does everybody have this sheet? It says. 2020 CPA proposal recommended for approval by town meeting. Please pull out this sheet. This is the guide to the next nine articles on the um, that we're going to be voting on. And we're trying to keep this really efficient and get you out of the sun fast. So there's a, a description of each article here. Um, Every, every one of these proposals has a lot of work put into it. Um, everyone ha has somebody, one of your neighbors, who's like taken leadership and put a lot of work into doing something to make our community better. And I just want to thank all the people who've stepped forward to provide leadership and put work into this. Also, the committee has put a lot of work into vetting every single proposal and taking them through, through a review process, um, revision process, um, and we feel very confident in every one of these proposals after a lot of, a lot of review. Everyone meets the goals that are stated for community preservation in Sunderland, and we've unanimously recommended every single one of these articles. So um, I encourage you to support them. And um, I think we'll just call each article, and if there are questions, let us know. And if not, we can just go ahead and vote. Having a little wind delay here. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Where were we? Article 10. Any questions on Article 10? Yes. So, Dana Roscoe, can we just have an explanation? 
all of these articles are coming from the um, the funding source is CPA uh, Open Space Reserve. How much money is in CPA Open Space Reserve? And and if we approve all of these articles, what are we left with? Please refer to your handout, the second paragraph. As of February 2020, the town had a balance of roughly $650,000 in uncommitted CPA funds. The recommended proposals, all of them, add up to just under $280,000. So if we approve them all, we will still have a balance of more than $370,000, which before this year's collection. So we're in we're very good shape. Any other questions on Article 10? Okay, let's uh, vote Article 10. All those in favor of Article 10, green card, please. All those opposed, red card. Passage unanimously. Thank you. Article Article 11. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 11. Second. Do you feel you want to do any explanation on this, Sarah? No. Any questions on Article 11? It's more CPA money being used. This piece, and I appreciate uh, the intro about CPA uh, and its, its use of funds, but this piece here, uh, actually is a partnership between us, the state, Kestrel, the Water District. This is how you leverage CPA money. And this allows for the acquisition of a large parcel of land adjacent the Hubbard Wells. <coughs> yeah, about 240 <coughs> plus thousand dollars of total commitment across multiple uh, groups of which the town's committing 64,000 to give us a large buffer around one of our drinking water wellheads. And that's really the perfect, pitch perfect application of what CPA can do. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. You're welcome. Any questions on Article 11? All those in favor of Article 11, green card please. All those opposed, red card. Article 11 passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, Article 12. Second. Any questions on Article 12? No? All those in favor of Article 12, green card, please. All those opposed, red card. Declare it passed unanimously. Oh, one, one. They're passed by majority. Where were we on Article 12? Now we're on 13, okay. 13, Article 13. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 13, please. Second. Any questions on Article 13? Seeing none, it's time to vote. Article 13, green card, if you're in favor. Red card, if you're opposed. I declare Article 13 passes unanimously. Thank you. Article 14. <laughs> Sorry. One of you guys. No. No. We'd like to move. move. Yeah, move Article 14. Sorry. Again. Chuckling under my mask. <laughs> nice, nice thing about a mask. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. Um, article, what are we on? Article 14. 14. Um, any questions on Article 14? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of Article 14, green card, please. All those opposed, red card. Declare it passed by majority. Article 
Article 16. Oh, 15. Oh, 15. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 15. 15, okay. 15 it is. Any questions on Article 15? Okay, all those in favor of Article 15, green card, please. All those opposed, red card. Declare pass by majority. Article 16. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 16, please. Second. Any questions on Article 16? Aaron. Hi, I just happened to notice that there was one dissenting opinion on the select board, and I'm just curious as to what the concerns were. Uh, moderator, if I could, uh, I was the dissenting vote on Article uh, 16, not the fact that it would be included, but, not, uh, but as a non-recommend. I think that uh, financing costs should be built in the projects up front. The town has never gone forward with some kind of project and not included financing costs, and I feel it's poor management. Thank you. Any other questions on Article 16? No, can't hear you. What happens if we don't pay the financing costs? We'll pay the financing costs some way. The financing costs have already been paid. If we, if we fund them in this way, we get them for half price, basically, because of the, 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 the fact that our CPA funds are matched. That, that's uh, actually a very, a very good question, and, and we kind of had talked about it before. The state of Massachusetts makes sure that we pay for everything, um, so we have to have the money before we can buy anything. So that's why the financing charges have already been paid. Uh, this is trying to finish off the project the way it was originally designed, and that's why we're looking for that, those financing charges right now. Any other questions on Article 16? Okay. All those in favor of Article 16, green card, please. All those opposed, declare passage unanimously. Article 17. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 17, please. Second. Any questions on Article 17? Mr. Moderator, if I may, ba basically what the, the town of uh, Sunderland would like to do is you'd like to use $50,000 from our CPA funds, which is allowed by the state, to help individuals or families that are unable to pay rent um, during this time of COVID with, so they either, base, basically they may not be able to afford the rent or whatever, and this would be able to pay for that. We are, we are partnered with, it's not the board, the select board doesn't make that determination. We, we go through uh, RDI, uh, who manage the program for us, um, so that we will be able to uh, help out our fellow residents in town. Hi everybody, uh, Mike, Judy Pierce. Um, my question is, are these grants or loans? These, these are grants. Basically, they will not pay them back. Any other questions on Article 17? Okay. And all those in favor of Article 17, green card, please. All those opposed, red card. Declare a passage unanimously. David. 
Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 18, and this is uh, one of the normal annual um, operating articles for the CPA where we allocate money to each of the respective categories. Second. There we go. Uh, any questions on Article 18? This is kind of a housekeeping accounting process that we do every year. Jennifer Uncles could spend the next three hours explaining to anybody if they'd like to listen. Because I think she's the only one that understands this in Peter. Okay, Article 18, any, any questions? Okay, all those in favor of Article 18, green card, please. All those opposed, red card. Passage unanimously. Article 19, please. Second. Have any questions? This is a long article. Any questions on Article 19? You want to give? Go ahead, Scott. Article 19 is basically uh, required in order to apply for a park grant. The uh, state wants to make sure that the community is committed to it. Um, the actual funds that will be used uh, to do the town, the municipal match, are the um, CPA funds that have also already been approved. So essentially, uh, no money will be committed unless we get the grant at 68% um, or more from the state. Are there any questions about that or the process? Okay. All those in favor of Article 18, green card. All those opposed, red card. Pass passes by majority. Oh, I declare a two-thirds vote on that one. I just, I just thank you. That was worth the trip. Article 20. You got it, Scotty. Uh, I, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 20. Second. Planning Board. Do you have any explanation, Dana? Hi, Dana Roscoe from the Planning Board. Uh, so there's a, a, a list uh, in a handout uh, in your package uh, that outlines seven proposed changes uh, to the bylaw. So the bylaw is not fixed in stone. Uh, we can come back and revisit it, uh, and we do. Uh, at most town meetings, we have uh, one or two uh, proposals from the planning board uh, to uh, change our bylaws. You'll note that um, most of these are typographical errors or, uh, or insignificant corrections. Uh, thank you to uh, Sarah Schneider, Snyder on the board and Steve Schneider, unrelated, on the board, uh, who uh, read, uh, uh, proofread uh, our bylaws and have flagged uh, these proposals, proposed changes, most of them. So, number one, uh, typographical error, reserve is the way it reads, preserve is the way it should read. Number two, typographical error, the word apart should be two words, a part. Number three, um, in the business use table, currently as it stands, storage and warehousing in the village center is allowed by a special permit. What's being proposed is that special permit be changed to not allowed in the village center. There are two uh, storage uh, warehousing facilities in town uh, today. Both of those are located in the commercial zone, so it will not impact any existing business as it is today. 
Uh, number four uh, is just again it's a it's a typographical error. Uh, the footnote uh, is not uh, is not referring to everything it should, so it's completely uh, a very minimal uh, but important change. Number five. Uh, there's a duplicate colon. Number six. Uh, I see. We can't have too many colons. Uh, number six. Uh, is just um, rewording uh, a very difficult passage uh, to make it quite a bit more uh, understandable uh, and the way uh, it currently exists and the way it's proposed to be written uh, are outlined uh, there for you to see. And finally, uh, number seven, correction of a typographical error, change the word follow to the word following. And that's the extent of these proposed changes. Thank you. Thanks, Dana. Are there any questions on that? Oh, there he is. Bob? I was just wondering about the storage unit. Are you changing so if a person wanted to add on to storage that he wouldn't be able to add on anymore? Dana? So, as I said, there are two existing storage facilities. There's one uh, out across from 7-Eleven, uh, and then there's the one in the center of town. Both of them are in the commercial district. The one that is in the center of town, uh, were it to uh, expand, it's still uh, there. The, the lot has land in both the commercial zone and the village residential. My understanding uh, of the permit that they've been issued is that there are wetland constraints that prohibit them from expanding beyond their existing footprint. I'm not on the Conservation Commission, but that's my understanding of that existing property. Any other questions on Article 20? Okay. All those in favor of Article 20, green card, please. All those opposed, red card. Declare it passes unanimously. So Articles 21 through 26 are what they call consent articles, and we usually vote them as a block. If anyone has any questions of those, about those, but they're pretty standard. Every year we do the same. Scott, Dave, just like to make a move on that, and uh, it's basically the articles that allow us to uh, function as a town and keep keep the business running. Motion, the second. second. There we go. Any questions on those articles, and we'll vote them all together. All those in favor of Articles 21 through 26, the consent articles, green card, please. Anyone opposed? The red card. Passes unanimously. I think we might be uh, nearing the end. You gentlemen, have anything else to add? I was figuring out 8 o'clock, but I'm... <laughs> so we need one more motion. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to I'll make a motion to dissolve, please. I'll second. All those in favor, green card. Anyone opposed? Bob? <laughs> Passage unanimously. Thank you for coming. <laughs>